The 4.3 special program has ended a while ago and the banners have been revealed. The first half being Navia and Ayaka, while the second half being Raiden and Yoimiya with the new 4-star Shevere. For this video, we'll be taking a look at both Navia and Ayaka in the first half, so let us jump right in. Navia is a 5-star Geo Claymore unit from Fontaine. Her auto attack does a 4-hit combo, so there's nothing special to see here. Her elemental skill fires a projectile which does Geo damage. It has a tap version which fires quickly in front of her, and a hold version where you can take aim before you fire. Her skill has a stack mechanic where she can gain crystal shrapnels whenever she picks up a crystallized shard. The more shrapnels she has, the more damage her skill does. For a short time after using her skill, Navia will gain a Geo infusion on her weapon which cannot be overridden. Navia's elemental Elemental Burst initiates a bombardment on enemies which periodically deals AOE Geo damage. Every time an enemy is hit by the bombs, she gains a Crystal Shrapnel for her Elemental skill. Now, thoughts. So, Navia being a Geo unit on top of being a Claymore user is quite unfortunate given that Geo is actually the worst of the 7 elements right now, and when it comes to Claymore users, they tend to have a very slow attack speed for their auto attacks. However, it does seem like Navia will slightly break the mold of Geo working best only with other Geo characters. While I was a bit disappointed that Navia wasn't going to fix the crystallized reaction as a whole, it does give me a little bit of hope that Hoyo design a character around it. Who knows, maybe someday they'll actually buff the reaction. Pfft. From what I could see, most of her damage is going to come from her skill and the rest of the portion being from her burst. The Geo infusion for her auto attacks will do some damage, though I doubt it will be significant enough to contribute to her overall damage. Plus, they specifically stated that the infusion has a short duration, so it's very likely that her infusion will last long enough for a single normal attack string. Her overall playstyle does seem to lean towards a quick swap character, and given her shrapnel mechanic on her skill, it does seem like you would need a good amount of energy recharge in order to burst every rotation so that she can trigger crystallize and pick up those shards later on. The only thing I'm not really too sure yet is that whether she has to be the one to pick up those crystallized shards in order to gain the shrapnel stacks or can she gain shrapnels if the shards was picked up by another unit on the team aside from Navia herself. Post edit ethereal here as I was editing the version 4.3 special program basically confirmed that other characters in the party can pick up the crystallized shards in order to give her the crystal shrapnel thing. So yeah, anyways back to the video. In terms of her potential teams, she definitely needs another Geo unit so that she can take advantage of the Geo Resonance buff and she can gain some help in getting her burst back by having the second unit generate a good amount of Geo particles. And since we're not entirely sure whether she scales off attack, defense, or HP, it's hard to say which Geo unit will be the best for her. What I could say for sure is that Zhongli will definitely be a good support for her with his super strong shield and the resistance shred for all elements which can buff the damage of the non-geo units outside of Navia. Plus, his pillar in the fight will help in generating some crystallized shots for Navia as long as it is not broken. And given that her team has to trigger crystallize to benefit the shrapnel mechanic from her skill, she will at least need either a pyro, hydro, electro, or cryo unit in her team. And given that she is a quick swap character, an off-field DPS unit like Shangling, Xingqiu, or Fischl will be a good option. There are definitely other options out there, but this is just for an example. I've also seen people saying that Ningguang will be a good geo partner for her, since her playstyle is quite similar to Navia. She can actually help Navia in generating more crystallized shards with her attacks, and she does do some good damage on her own, especially if your Ningguang is at Constellation 6. We also did get a brief look at the two new artifact sets, and it is quite obvious that the nighttime set is made for Navia. While we have yet to get official information on what these artifact sets do, it is easy to speculate that Navia's set will have something to do with geo damage and crystallized reaction overall. To sum things up, I think Navia being a quick swap unit does give her more value than burst reliant carries like Ito, who is also a geo claymore user, or someone like Xiao, since she can readily dish out damage without needing to rely on her elemental burst. I don't think her performance will be anything as spectacular as what we had with Nuvilet, but it's very likely that her damage will be decent for a 5-star unit, similar to something like Risley, but let's just hope that her playstyle doesn't get locked behind constellations of some sort, and let's hope that C0 Navia will be quite decent. Anyways, that's enough about Navia, so let's move on to the second unit of the first half being Ayaka. So Ayaka is a 5-star cryo sword unit from Inazuma. 
Kiki is one of the two units whose existence has been confirmed back in the beta test for the game before its release, with the other unit being Xiao. Her auto attack is a 5 hit combo, of which she does a slashing dash at the final hit. Her charge attack unleashes a flurry, which can hit enemies in the air given that their elevation is low enough. Her elemental skill summons a blooming ice around her, dealing AoE cryo damage to any enemies near her. Ayaka's elemental burst sends forth a storm of whirling braids, which does AoE cryo damage to enemies within its path. If the burst does not hit anything, it will continue to move forward until its duration. And if it does hit something, it will stay in place and continue doing damage until all hits are done. Her burst hits for a total of 20 times, with 19 being the continuous cuts and 20 of being the final finisher. Ayaka has a custom sprint where she applies cryo to any enemy near her whenever she reappears from it, and she gains cryo infusion on her blade for a short period of time. Her Ascension 1 grants a damage bonus to her normal and charge attacks after using her skill, while her Ascension 4 restores stamina and grants Ayaka cryo damage bonus if she applies cryo to an enemy when she reappears from her custom sprint. So, how good is Ayaka? As an Ayaka enjoyer who bought her skin and also triple crown her, I did enjoy playing her quite a lot when I did. I love how well her kit synergizes with itself. The cryo infusion you gain from the sprint, the buff to a normal and charge attack from Ascension 1 if you use her elemental skill, and then the extra cryo bonus from her Ascension 4 if you sprint correctly. Everything I feel like it just works in tandem with each other. In fact, when she came out, I often compared her to Diluc because the synergistic part of Diluc's kit is quite similar to what Ayaka has. Now, if we were to talk about meta, Ayaka is basically one of the dominant carries when it comes to freeze teams, as the other options include Risley and Ganyu. Of course, 4 star cryo units like Kaya, Rosaria, and Chong Yun can also compete in this scenario. The reason why she's one of the best is due to the nature of how a freeze team works. When running this team, most enemies can't move because they're frozen, and very likely you'll have an Animo grouper to group them up, like Kazuha or Venzi. Ayaka's burst is guaranteed to do the full amount of damage, and since they can't move at all, her burst will not miss or move until it ends or until they are dead. Most of her teams focus on capitalizing her burst damage, though you can also run her as an on-field DPS focusing on her auto attacks. And for that playstyle, I'd say her damage is actually quite decent in that regard. And one of my favorite things about Ayaka is actually her charge attack. So you guys know that one part in the Skara weekly boss fight where you have to break those electro turrets before he drops his ball on us and there's like one on the ground and then there's three floating around it. I love using Ayaka in this situation because because she can hit the floating turrets with a cryo infused charge attack and I don't have to leave the domain to swap to another unit in order to hit them. And in terms for her other teams right, you can also run Mel Ayaka, although the team is quite competitive to Mel Ganyu and personally I don't really like running Mel Ayaka for two reasons. One, my Bennett is constellation 6 so Ayaka cannot retain her cryo infusion since it will be overridden by Bennett's pyro infusion. Number two, I feel that her burst is much more suited for a freeze team but that is quite conditional. If you're going against enemies that can be frozen, freeze is the way to go, while if you're going against enemies that cannot be frozen, such as bosses, I think a melt team will be good to boost her burst damage. Unless you have Shen He, and this is the second part about Ayaka I want to talk about. Ayaka with Shen He versus Ayaka without Shen He. For the uninformed, Shen He is a 5 star cryo support originating from Li Wei. She's one of the few niche support characters that are made to buff their element, similar to the likes of Goro for Geo, Faruzan for Animo, and Sara for Electro, with the only difference is that Shen He is a 5 star unit while the other 3 are 4 stars. By now, we all know that Shen He is basically made for Ayaka, so at Constellation 0, her skill does have a quota. 5 if you tap it, and 7 if you hold. Her skill buff works similar to Yunjin in that it adds a flat damage bonus and the quota will be consumed per enemy. This does not get affected by any other damage buffs, however it can be affected by crit. And due to the whole quota mechanic, you want to use her quills to buff something that does cryo damage but something that also does a lot of damage with the least amount of hits, which aligns with what Ayaka's burst does. In an ideal freeze team, which is a very premium team consisting of Shenhe, Ayaka, Kazuha, and Kakomi with tenacity, the rotation is mostly focused on quick swapping all the characters in a way that you can maximize the buffs for Ayaka, and you can get 2 of Shenhe's Tappy, so that will total up to a quarter of 10, which means you will buff half of Ayaka's burst damage. Now, the real question is do you need to pull for Shenhe for Ayaka if you wanna, if you wanna go for Ayaka or whatnot? So, from how I see it, Ayaka definitely still works without Shenhe because keep in mind, Ayaka came out back in version 2.0 and I believe I pulled for both Ayaka on release and I also pulled for Shenhe, I think she got released at version 2.4. 
Fact check me if I'm wrong by the way. But Ayaka has worked even before Shunha and Shunha does buff Ayaka's damage by quite a lot. And like I said, Ayaka definitely still works without her. But if you want to maximize Ayaka's burst damage, she is absolutely necessary in this case. I've tried both variants with and without Shunha and honestly, I don't think I can go back to a world of running a team without Shunha at all. Though, do keep in mind that this is in context of doing difficult content in Genshin such as the Spiral Abyss. Outside of that, Shunha is not necessary for Ayaka if you don't do things like the Abyss or you don't want to go for damage, you just want to pull for Ayaka for the aesthetic and you want to use her for exploration, I think that is absolutely fine. So to close things off, both units are good in their own way and it completely depends on what your preference is. I would say that Ayaka has more value in the meta compared to Navia but that's meta and Abyss and stuff and if you pull for Ayaka, you really want to have to consider Shunha if you want to maximize her damage. As good as the character sound for the first half, it's going to be quite hard especially when you want to compare pair it with the second half of version 4.3 where we'll have Raiden and Yoi Mia rerun alongside the new overloaded theme 4 star unit Chevro. Anyways, do the usual YouTube thing, give this video a like if you enjoyed it and you found it to be informative, subscribe for more content and share your thoughts down below on why you want to pull for either of them or on why you are skipping these banners personally. For the future Navia mains, do come back in the future or comment in the future and share your thoughts on how Navia has been treating you in your Genshin experience. And as for the Ayaka mains, do share your thoughts on how Ayaka has been for you for as long as she's been around. Anyways, that is all for now. This is Ethereal, signing off.